We get asked pretty often about how we create clickable prototypes, what the process is, and how the end result looks and feels. So we created this video to show some of the common steps we take when creating a prototype. After the initial discovery and strategy is done, we usually start designing screens in Sketch and building a prototype from there. Sketch is a great design program and there's some really awesome plugins for it. We mainly use the Craft plugin from Envision, which helps you source things like names, images, and other info that you'd commonly put into a prototype. Here we're using the Duplicate feature to take a card layout and clone it a bunch of times in a grid automatically. Another handy feature of this plugin is that you can source images by a category without having to dig around for them endlessly. And if you aren't happy with the first result, you can keep clicking on the Place Photos button until you get one that you like. So here we're reviewing all of the different artboards that we have in our sketch file. And since this prototype is around user personas, we have quite a few copies of the persona detail screen that show how easily you can add and remove user stories that relate to that persona. Now we've moved over into InVision, which is a web-based tool for prototyping. We're creating a new prototype, naming it, and selecting iPad as the project type. Next, we drag in all of the screens that we exported from Sketch. Now we'll just reorganize them in a way that makes the most sense for the flow of the project. The key feature of InVision is how you can connect multiple screens together with clickable hotspots. You can also create templates, which you can use on more than one screen for things like navigation. Here we're fixing the header so the design will scroll under it, and then we're hotspotting the project filter to a copy of that screen that shows the page in a filtered state. And when you click on that project filter, you start to get a sense of how the prototype looks and feels interactive. Moving on, now we're applying our template to a new screen, and then making a backlink to the list of projects. With prototypes that are set up for tablets and phones, you can apply animated transitions between screens, making it feel more refined. Now let's walk through a completed prototype in a way that someone might actually navigate and use it as if it were a fully functioning application. We start by signing in, and now we're on the projects list, which serves as the home screen for the app. Now we're filtering the list of projects, clicking on a project to get to the project details screen, and here we're editing the settings of that project. Going back, um, now we're creating a new persona. Here we're drilling into the details of an existing persona. Looking at all the user stories around the empathy map. And here we're just going to inline delete one and add a new one. Just demonstrating how you could type into that text field, hit enter to save. Now we're going back to the project and clicking over to the list of clients. And then drilling into the details of a client. And then finally accessing the account menu and signing back out. So as you can imagine, prototypes can get a lot more complex than that. They can have a lot more screens and states, um, but I think that's a good introduction into sort of how we think about prototyping and how the end product looks and feels.